All right, so welcome to kind of a, a quick run through here for just kind of an introduction to our Chem 1212 lab in the semester at North Georgia. Uh, my name is Dr. Meyer. Uh, if you don't recognize the voice from any of the 1211 videos, if you took it here, uh, <clears throat> I apologize for not having a, a facial video for, for this one. Uh, you hopefully see my face plenty in, in upcoming videos and meetings and we hopefully are, are back in person eventually here. Uh, but what I wanna do kind of with this video is just kind of run through some quick things uh, as far as where, where you'll find everything this semester. Um, our organization in D2L has hopefully improved a little bit uh, and, make it, and hopefully it's a little more streamlined and just easy to use uh, than what it's been in the past. Uh, and if you've never used CSE Pub before, then hopefully this will be kind of a nice quick introduction to things uh, as far as kind of what to expect for this semester. So <clears throat> uh, what I'm going to kind of run through real quick, uh, I will kind of show some information here in the syllabus uh, that is posted on D2L as well. Uh, don't worry if you're in one of my classes, like if you're in my section DE class, we do meet at 2 p.m., not 8 a.m., so don't freak out and think there's been some kind of change or mistake. Uh, I'm just using the same video for both my courses. Um, and in fact, other instructors may be using this just general introduction video as well if they're not able to do something virtually for themselves uh, or if they're uh, just for anyone that's added late and, or wasn't able to attend their virtual meetings just so that people can get kind of an, a general introduction here for kind of our 12-12 course this semester since all of our lab sections are pretty much the same. Um, very, very minor differences kind of here and there between them. Now, uh, some quick things in terms of uh, organization. When you log into our D2L page, um, which is where you're going to find everything for this lab, uh, the starting point, there's this first folder. Uh, it has information as far as it should have the syllabus. Uh, this will vary a little bit from instructor to instructor, but it also really importantly has this link to buy the lab manual. If you make sure you click the link that's in your D2L class uh, when you're logged into it, uh, and when you do click that link, it's automatically going to take you to a CSE pub page uh, to purchase the right one for your section. So notice I was in section DD on uh, D2L. It took me to the purchase page for DD. It's actually logged me in because I was already logged in. Uh, but if you aren't, uh, if you aren't, don't have access to the course already, it'll ask you to actually purchase this particular course. Uh, so it's nicely set up. You don't need a course code or anything of that sort. Uh, all you need to do is basically log into D2L, uh, follow the link. The link takes you to where you need to go. Uh, and then you can purchase your CSE Pub access there. Uh, I do advise usually just buying it from CSE Pub directly, simply because it is cheaper. Uh, CSE Pub directly usually I think is about $40. Uh, if you try to buy like an access pass or like a subscription from our bookstore and then use it, you're gonna find out it's about 54, I think last I saw. Uh, so there's a pretty big markup there. So just kind of take it into account when you're going to purchase things. I know some people have scholarship money that has to be spent at the bookstore. So by all means, just use it where you have to. Uh, in terms of other things that you're going to see here, for my course, I have this little office hours and virtual meetings tab. So I don't have anything in here yet. Uh, you will see something in here before our first class on Tuesday. I'll send out kind of an email reminder to people uh, that's going to have kind of how we're going to do our virtual meetings. Uh, I think I explained in our last email, we're probably going to try to use Microsoft Teams if it will work for everybody. Um, if it doesn't seem like that's going to be a, a usable option or if there's a lot of negative feedback, I might just go back to Blackboard Collaborate. Uh, we thankfully shouldn't hopefully have to be virtual too much this semester unless like everything just gets shut down, which realistically is a possibility at some point. We just don't know uh, what the semester is going to hold. Unfortunately, it's going to be kind of a weird, weird time for all of us. Uh, <clears throat> but I will probably hold a lot of virtual office hours, especially these first couple weeks, but almost all my office hours will be virtual. And I will have a link in here of what, kind of how they'll be held. Uh, the office hours themselves will probably be in Blackboard Collaborate if you've never used it, which will be really easy. It'll basically just be in this folder and there'll be a link and you can just follow the link to uh, eventually open it up. Uh, it's very similar to Microsoft Teams in some ways. Uh, Microsoft Teams is a little bit nicer for me being able to show things to people. Uh, and so I do prefer to use that when we meet as a class virtually for any reason, which we will be doing kind of the, the first couple weeks here. <clears throat> um, the other thing you'll see in terms of the layout here, uh, you see all of our labs that we're going to be doing for the semester and things are now organized by lab rather than kind of like topic piece. So like for the crystals lab, you can click that folder and you're going to see all the information. You have pre-lab assignments, has like reading, a pre-lab video, the pre-lab uh, assignment. And then the one thing that's different in the past that we're doing this year is all of our pre-lab quizzes are now online. Uh, so you'll have your pre-lab quiz actually through CSE Pub as well or through this D2L link that'll take you to CSE Pub to take it. Um, and so that part is a little bit different than what we've traditionally done. Now, the what that's going to allow us to do, and I'm going to kind of get to the syllabus here in a moment, is it is going to allow us to hopefully kind of navigate things a little bit differently in terms of how we attend lab and do our experiments uh, and get hopefully kind of free up some extra time during the uh, time we normally spend in lab to be able to just complete more so we can actually get our normal experiments done, uh, even though we're going to have to readjust kind of our schedule from what we're used to or what we've seen in past years. So for that part, I'm going to actually get into our syllabus so I can talk a little bit about our course structure this semester and kind of how things will be a little bit different maybe than what you're used to. Uh, you'll see all my contact information here. So these are kind of my, my office hours. 
Uh, and like I said, the first couple of weeks will probably be virtual uh, for these, unfortunately. Uh, and then after that, hopefully uh, we can look at what, what I have available in terms of being able to do things in person. We'll kind of just see what, where we're at for the semester at that point, hopefully. <clears throat> but uh, you'll see email, phone number. So th this is my office phone. So probably just try my email for right now. It's just the easiest way to get a hold of me if you do need to get a hold of me. Uh, and we can communicate and set up because if you need to meet times that are outside of this range, uh, we can find ways to do that. I have other available times. Those are just the set ones that I'll always try to have. Now, things you're going to need for the course, uh, everyone is going to need that CSC Pub subscription, which you can follow the link that I showed a minute ago uh, to be able to get that. Uh, <clears throat> the other things you are going to need for our in-person labs, uh, I have here that you need a carbon copy notebook. You actually really probably don't need the carbon copy this semester. Uh, I think we've made kind of a general decision in our department that we're probably not going to collect the carbon copy pages uh, just because it's extra points of contact that could potentially like transmit the virus if there is an outbreak. So we're just trying to take some extra precautions there. And so as a result, if you just want to use a plain normal notebook that's significantly cheaper, that's completely fine with me. Uh, it'll probably save yourself a, a good chunk of money because you can just use like a $1 or a $2 notebook from Walmart will be totally fine for the what we're going to be using them for anyway. Uh, rather than having to have the carbon copy one. If you have a carbon copy one from last year and just want to keep using it, by all means, feel free. That's also totally fine. Uh, the other thing you're going to want is a face shield. So instead of normal safety glasses, uh, in order for us to be able to basically be in the building, we have to have face coverings of some kind uh, by our USG policies this semester. And so as a result, to try and make things a little bit easier, rather than trying to wear a face mask and goggles at the same time, which probably is going to lead to the goggles just becoming fogged up and make it make things just awkward and difficult during the whole lab period. Uh, I think a face shield tends to work a little bit better, and it's kind of what we're going to try out at least uh, for our department. So we're going to require everyone to have a face shield. Now, we are going to have some of these available uh, for purchase when we actually start in-person labs, uh, which for the 12-12 course, I think will be the third week of the actual class when we get down to our schedule a little bit later. Uh, but though they are available. Uh, you can get them uh, at the bookstore, I think, is selling them. Uh, we will have some, like I said, for sale, hopefully that first week of in-person lab as well. Uh, and then there'll be uh, some addition. And like, if you want, you can also just you can find like face shields, you know, at Walmart or Target or other places probably right now uh, as well for pretty affordable prices. <clears throat> uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on our course ob uh, objectives descriptions. You can read those if you're interested in kind of some of the things we're going to be doing. Uh, what I want to focus on is kind of just course structure and some expectations. So I have here uh, in terms of attendance that attendance for your lab meetings are mandatory. Uh, that if you don't come and you don't talk to us at all, uh, you will end up making a zero in the lab. Uh, however, I'm well aware that this is likely to be a very kind of weird and different semester uh, in terms of just like, you know, what can actually happen potentially. Uh, and so we, we will likely be pretty flexible here as best we can. Uh, if you know you can't attend a lab section for any given reason, uh, contact us. Uh, not all of our sections are full, so it may be possible to have you attend a different section um, on that given week. Uh, and if that's not an option either, like say you're under quarantine or something of that sort, we do have demonstration videos that you can watch instead uh, that we can make available in case uh, they are necessary, that you can just watch the video, get your data that, that way, and be able to do the experiment. Uh, for anyone that get, at some point becomes uncomfortable being in class in person, uh, if that's something that is, is an issue, like we do have ways that we can kind of approach that in a similar manner as well. Uh, so just kind of the biggest thing I think with all of this is just be in contact with us. Uh, if you just don't show up and we don't hear from you, we can't do anything to help with accommodations and then it becomes much harder. Uh, but if something does come up, just reach out to us, like whether that's my, if it's my class or a different one, uh, we'll be more than happy to do whatever we can to try and accommodate. Because uh, like I said, we all know this is going to be a very, very weird semester in terms of uh, what's possible. <clears throat> now, uh, in terms of general lab rules, uh, most of these hopefully are fairly standard, uh, relatively common sense, right? Uh, no short shirt stresses, so you need long pants, you need closed toe shoes. Uh, we do use a number of strong acids and bases in 12-12 for our labs, so uh, we do want to take proper dress code precautions with that. Uh, and then in addition to that, we do have our face shields rather than the goggles uh, this semester, which uh, are a little bit easier to make sure they're worn properly because most of them, most of the like cheap ones anyway, aren't like you can't flip them up really. So once you put them on, like they're there, you're, like you're not really going to be taking them off. Uh, but at the same time, hopefully the, a lot of the ones, like even if you get like, you know, ones that are like three or four dollars, like the, they usually have some kind of foam kind of uh, straps to them that hopefully are a little more comfortable. So hopefully that won't be that big of a deal uh, in terms of keeping those on all the time. Uh, a couple of the next ones are hopefully common sense, like no eating, drinking, smoking in the lab, things like that. Uh, the chemicals we use are, you know, hazardous enough that you don't want any risk of ingesting any of them. Uh, so it's just easiest just to not have food or drink in the lab. Uh, if you do feel like you need a drink, uh, like if you have just like allergies and like a, like a sore throat or something that you've had for like lingering from that, <coughs> uh, where you haven't really necessarily been, been more seriously sick, hopefully, 
uh, then you will be able to have like a drink sitting outside the room if you need to, like on a table or something that we can set up. Uh, and that way you can grab a drink if you need to, but the drinks should not be coming in the lab for any reason. Uh, the other things, uh, disposing of chemicals uh, as directed. Uh, so every lab, for the most part, uh, is gonna have waste that we can't put down a sink. So that means we're gonna have to have special disposal precautions. So we'll kind of go over those on a week by week basis, but don't just assume you can put something down the sink because the answer to if it can go down the sink or not is usually no this semester. And so we'll try to, try to make sure everyone knows what's going on for waste disposal every single week. Uh, and kind of in a similar vein, if you're measuring out chemicals, try to take caution and only measure out what you actually need. Because uh, if you take a bulk amount of excess, like we usually try not to put things back in the reagent bottles because there's like a risk of contamination for other, other people, either, either that section or a lab later that week. Uh, and so just try to be cautious as you're kind of using chemicals. Uh, try to take only what you need and kind of be careful in measuring it out. Uh, and don't don't put like stuff back into the reagent bottle unless you've just like dumped all of it out for some reason, in which case you should probably, probably grab the instructor or the TA and we'll kind of figure out what we have to do in that situation. Uh, <clears throat> point five on here, just using common sense. So like you shouldn't be doing things that you're not told. You shouldn't be mixing things that you weren't asked to mix. You know, simple things like that and a horse play around in the, ra in the lab. And like, I think those are, ho like I said, hopefully common sense at this point. Uh, hopefully we're all enough to know that we don't need to be doing those things here. If you have interest and want to try those other things, like those are things that can be done outside of our lab. <clears throat> uh, like if you're interested in different things, we can also look at those things you can talk to like the chemistry club about, although like I said, some of some of those things will be a little, little more limited maybe this semester than, than what we were used to. Uh, the other thing then that's going to be new this year uh, is going to be that we are going to be doing social distancing in lab. Uh, so that part is a little bit different, uh, and it's going to cause our lab structure and kind of schedule to be a little bit different as well compared to normal. Uh, how we're going to do this is we're going to kind of break every lab into like two groups. Um, for my sections, I'm going to ba basically just do it alphabetically, like the first half of the, al half of the alphabet. Uh, for my class will be what I call group one, the second half of the alphabet in my class will be group two, uh, and then I'm going to have those two groups basically attend like every other week, kind of in a staggered fashion. Um, and what this will allow us to do is actually keep social distancing, we'll have 12 people in lab at a time, which kind of fits our social distancing requirements uh, for the university, uh, but because of the way we're going to hopefully structure things, we'll still be able to do all the labs as normal, and I'll kind of explain that as I go through the, the lab structure and the expectations and schedule here in a second. So, on that side of things, um, our first couple of weeks are going to be online, right? And I said this just simply because um, for the university required our first week to be online anyway, and for 12-12, our second week is also actually online. Um, and that's going to be simply because the, the lab we're doing was one that was a dry lab anyway, uh, and so we're going to actually just have the lab be online. It'll be a little bit easier here so that we get adjusted to things. Uh, <clears throat> and then hopefully most of the rest of the weeks are all going to be in-person labs. Uh, and so you'll see as we get to the schedule that, you know, that we'll be back in person for everything, hopefully after that. <clears throat> but it also gives us some time for everyone to have face shields, things like that, because those, those usually aren't things people have had pre-purchased because they weren't things you needed often for 1211. Um, the other things that we're going to have, uh, once our in-person labs begin, like I, like I kind of described, we're only going to have half of a lab there every week and kind of have a rotation. Where you're basically, if you come one week, you're not there the next. Uh, and so you'll be kind of every other week for attendance. If you know you're going to have like multiple conflicts, like let's say I put assign you to group one and you look at the schedule of when group one is meeting and you know you're going to have like multiple conflicts in the group one schedule, but you wouldn't have some for group two, feel free, feel free to reach out to me and I might be able to kind of shuffle some things around and see if anyone wants to switch uh, so that we can actually get you to where you can be in person to do all the labs if possible. Um, that's the main reason that we're kind of setting up the schedule the way we are is we, we would like everyone to do it all the labs in person if possible to get the hands-on experience because uh, there are a few more things that actually have some techniques to them here in 1212 uh, than what we have in 12 excuse me than what we have in 1211 and so we just kind of want to expose everyone to uh, a lot of the hands-on parts of those labs so that they're not missing out <clears throat> now in order for us to actually get through our normal schedule of labs uh, there are going to be a lot of weeks where you actually do two experiments instead of one. Uh, this sounds like it's probably really intimidating, like, oh my goodness, like we you know, had three hour lab section or like lab time slots previously, and you know, a lot of our labs maybe took two hours in like 1211. Well, the good news is a lot of our 1212 labs are shorter. Uh, we do have one additional dry lab in the, kind of the middle of the semester that is actually one of our kind of doubled up ones, so that one actually won't be too bad to hopefully combine. And then most of our other doubled up weeks you'll act, are actually going to be labs that are fairly short. Um, and since I'd already mentioned that there are pre-lab quizzes are going to be online, um, the pre-lab quiz and pre-lab assignment will be due before you come to lab, uh, and that'll actually save us some time in lab itself, which means you, there won't be much for pre-lab lectures, probably just like kind of a, a 
rehashing of any really important safety and waste disposal guidelines for that particular experiment or experiments. Uh, and then we'll basically just get into the labs themselves. So because of that, a lot of our 12-12 labs, especially the second half of the semester where we're doing two labs every week uh, that you're there, uh, the labs are pretty short. And so if you come well prepared and kind of know what's going on, you can probably do your two labs still in an hour and a half and be out of there, um, or maybe two hours. Uh, and like you shouldn't really have any time crunch up to that three hour point uh, if you come, uh, come well prepared and kind of know what's going on. Um, and so that's the one big, big thing, like these pre-lab quizzes and pre-lab assignments before coming to lab, like they are important to make sure you hopefully have read through the lab and understand kind of what you're doing. Uh, and then we'll be there in lab to kind of assist and kind of keep things hopefully running smoothly while you're there. Um, but our focus on those doubled up weeks is mainly just, you know, get the experiments done. Uh, and then the other thing I will kind of mention in terms of like the notebooks and kind of how we're going to be using those is that for our notebooks, uh, I do want everything recorded in your actual notebook first before putting it on CSE Pub. But what I would suggest you do kind of at the very end of the day, or like if you finish one lab and you're doing a second lab, but there's like downtime while you wait for something to heat, for instance, uh, go ahead and put some of your data from that first experiment on CSE Pub and maybe try the first calculation or two just to make sure you've entered it all right. And that way you can kind of check that you understand what you're doing for your calculations, uh, but also check and make sure you're entering your data correctly. Uh, because it's really easy to make mistakes. And if you've taken 1211 here, you've probably probably had an instance at some point in 1211 where maybe you input data wrong for a data, like a value, like as far as like a measurement that you made uh, on CSE Pub. And then you missed all your calculation questions after that because it used the incorrect value that you didn't realize you put in wrong uh, to do all of the calculations and said that all your calculations were wrong. And so there, that, that's something to kind of just be aware of. Like CSE Pub uses the data you give it initially uh, to do all the calculations and figure out what your right answer should be. Uh, and so it's important to make sure your data gets entered right. Uh, and that way, if you put all of your data in and try the first calculation or two while you're still in lab, it's easy to catch mistakes. And if your professor has to like reset a question or something like that, it's much easier to do just right there uh, than having to wait and then you know do it the night before the assignments do. And you just kind of hope your professor actually checks their email and can, can fix it for you before the assignments do. And that'll just make things a little bit easier, I think, for everybody. <clears throat> now, and, and I say in here, like I said, there, there are going to be times where we have like the two labs and one, one uh, lab meeting going on or two experiments and one lab meeting going on. I don't think there's going to be time crunches there. Uh, the labs are short enough and we'll be, be helping as much as we can to kind of keep things moving so that you shouldn't have any like really time crunch issues. Uh, if you are worried about any of that, um, just let us know and we can try to like do some extra things like basically from the start of those lab periods just to make sure we can kind of help you along. Um, so that you don't have to feel like pressure as far as like you know, trying to do things quickly because we, we do understand the semester is going to be a little bit weird and different. Everyone doing the labs by themselves rather than pairs. Uh, and so we don't want people to be overwhelmed by us taking this approach. Um, we're just trying to make sure we actually get through all of our experiment materials and give a chance for everyone to do things, you know, as much hands on as possible. Um, and so if that is going to create any issues, just talk to us. Uh, we'll be happy to try and see what we can do accommodation wise as needed because uh, we don't we don't want that to become just like an overwhelming burden on you or something where you're you know, <clears throat> kind of freaking out about trying to get your experiments done. Like we, we have ways to kind of help out and make sure that, that that's hopefully not going to be an issue. <clears throat> uh, last couple notes here then before I talk about the schedule, uh, access to the labs in terms of like late credit, like once the due dates pass, like the lab closes. So there is really no late credit because the assignment will close off. You won't be able to access it anymore in terms of answering anything. Uh, if you know you're going to have a problem like finishing an assignment on time, please just reach out to us. Like you can reach out to me in advance. Like don't, don't wait till, you know, if, it's, if an assignment's due at like midnight or something, don't wait till like 1130 at night to email me. I'm probably not going to grant an extension at that point. But if you email me like the day or two before, maybe even the day of, you, you know, if there's some extenuating circumstances going on, just like, hey, like I got all this stuff going on. Like, is there any way I can get like a short extension? Like most people, especially this semester, are going to be pretty flexible on some of those things as best we can be. Uh, as long as it's not just like a, a constant habit. Like if you're emailing me every single, you know, day that something's due like all semester long at like seven or eight o'clock at night it's like hey i've got this going on it's like that's a repetitive pattern then i might start getting a little getting a little less likely to to give any extensions but for the most part as long as you're in communication with me like i'm more than happy to help out uh, however i can as we kind of get through all of this uh, <clears throat> grade scale uh pretty straightforward just 90 80 70 60. Uh, i have a note in here that in the event of class averages being lower than normal sometimes we might lower the cutoffs uh, I don't think that's happened really in one of my lab sections in quite a while, so don't don't really expect these to move very much for the lab. Uh, they tend to stay pretty pretty close to those exact cuts. 
Uh, we do have some department and university level kind of uh, chemical hygiene and just additional kind of uh, syllabus information that you can access through these links if you're interested. Uh, for the most part, most of these probably won't come up too much unless there's some kind of like uh, major spill or incident uh, in lab uh, or unless there's something like involving like uh, academic integrity or something of that sort. Um, <clears throat> within the lab, which hopefully I, there shouldn't really be any need for that. I mean, in, re, in reality, I don't think the lab is so difficult where anyone should ever feel the need to have to do something of that sort. If you're struggling with anything, just reach out and ask questions. Like the faculty, like my, whether it's my section or not, like we're all happy to help. Uh, and so don't, don't be afraid to ask us questions as much as possible. All right, and then the last little bit that I'll talk about here uh, is just the schedule. Uh, so our general schedule for what the labs are gonna look like this semester. Uh, for 12-12, our first two weeks are gonna be virtual. So your individual instructors should have probably talked to you if, you if it's not my course about how that's gonna work. Or if you've added the class and you're watching this after your first class meeting, this is hopefully kind of a, a summary of what they probably talked about in this first week. Uh, and then the second week is also gonna be virtual because it's a dry lab that's gonna look at crystal modeling. Uh, and so we have uh, we'll have a couple videos up uh, in terms of kind of walking through some different things. Uh, and your individual instructors will probably talk about what they intend to do in terms of whether they're going to meet uh, and actually go through material specifically if they present. Or probably most likely what I think most of us plan on doing next week uh, is that we're going to have kind of a, a video on some of the crystal modeling that will help you kind of walk through a couple examples uh, that we want you to watch. And then we want you to try going through... Uh, the actual lab questions uh, during our normal time slots and we'll probably all be available virtually at that time through either like Blackboard or Microsoft Teams or something of that sort uh, that your instructor will tell you ahead of time uh, so that we can answer questions. Uh, and that way you can kind of ask questions as you need and we can hopefully set up basically a virtual meeting that's inclusive with a class and have a somewhat classroom environment uh, for those meetings. Um, but it will be virtual uh, still that second week. Uh, starting in the third week and on, then we will actually have our normal labs. And so here's where we see things broken into kind of groups one and two. So like group the third week, the first group, so the first half of the class will come and do the solutions lab. And the following week, the other half will come and do that same lab. And we'll see that kind of alternating pattern for the rest of the semester. Uh, you will notice there's no like just straight off weeks or exam review weeks like we've had in the past. Uh, unfortunately, just to, to get kind of all of our labs in, uh, we were either going to have to double up a lot of labs to still have review weeks, and we just we didn't feel like that was going to be a good idea. So we, we tried not to make double labs every single week and kind of space things out a little differently uh, to accommodate that. <clears throat> uh, but it did mean we'd had to kind of lost our, our exam review weeks. Uh, we may still try to put out some exam review material. Uh, I just don't know if we're going to be doing that through lecture or lab or how we're exactly going to handle that yet. Uh, we still have a few things kind of up in the air and what we'll be what we'll be doing exactly this semester in that regard. Uh, <clears throat> but like I said, we, and if you look at the schedule, we actually only have three weeks of double labs. Uh, and I'll just kind of mention here, like the, the kinetics lab is a dry lab, so it's a little bit easier to kind of tie into this in terms of when we get there. KA and KSP are both very short labs. Uh, the ECHEM and the enthalpy labs, like the electrochem is usually pretty short. Uh, and the enthalpy lab, if you've read the pre-lab material and kind of understand what's going on, can be very short. Uh, and so there's really not, not a whole lot here that should hopefully be a concern in terms of our doubled up weeks, uh, in terms of being able to finish everything. Uh, and you will note we do finish everything before our Thanksgiving break week, uh, because once we hit Thanksgiving break, like that's going to be it for the semester. We have no final exam in this class, um, and so you won't have anything that's going to be like a final exam, like during final exam week. Um, the only thing you might have is like the, the last two reports, like your ECHEM and Enthalpy uh, labs might be due during that final exam week, uh, depending on kind of what your professor decides for due dates. Um, for my sections, I tend to, like, if someone's done the lab, you know, if you do the solutions lab here on the 31st, uh, which actually it's the week, I think, of the 31st, <coughs> uh, so probably September 1st, I guess, for my class. Uh, if you do the lab on that day, uh, then what I'm going to have basically is the following week, your experiment will be due, like, basically all of your assignment will be due, uh, and then the next group will do the experiment, and then their assignment will be due the following week. So it's going to be based on when you do the experiment in terms of what your due date's going to be. Um, some other instructors might just have a single due date for the whole class, so that's going to vary a little bit on professor. Uh, so if you're watching this from another section uh, that's not mine, uh, you may want to ask your instructor how they intend to do the due dates, uh, just as kind of a, a point of clarification so that there's no confusion, hopefully, on that. Uh, but I think that pretty much highlights all of the major things uh, for this semester. It gives you an idea of kind of how things are going to work, uh, the major points of our syllabus. Uh, one last note in terms of grading. Uh, if you look in the grade book, uh, you'll see like there's spots already there. So this is like a student view. You'll see like scores and everything here. Uh, make sure you always open your assignments in D2L because uh, sometimes what might happen is if you, instead of opening like through a D the D2L link, so if I go back to like our, our uh, course homepage here, <clears throat> 
if you log into CSE Pub and access, say, like the Crystal assignment, like Post Lab, uh, if you don't go through the link I just went through on D2L and you just log into CSE Pub and get to it that way instead, uh, then it's possible like CSE Pub and D2L might not communicate properly to show your grade in the gradebook on D2L. Uh, so try to always access everything just from D2L. I think it's organized much better than it's ever been in the past, so hopefully it's really easy to use this semester. Uh, but if you do have any issues, that let us know. And as a result, if you open everything from D2L, your grade should pretty much automatically update all the time, like as soon as you're done with an assignment. Uh, now, that said, if you have a grade that doesn't show up right away, a lot of times that might be because there's manual grading on that assignment that uh, the faculty have to finish before the grade will pop up. Um, but hopefully if we're able to stay on top of grading reasonably well, you should see those scores pop up you know, reasonably within like a week or two uh, of finishing all of your assignments. Uh, if it's been two or three weeks and you're still missing a grade for a particular assignment, feel free to reach out to us and like, hey, is you know, something still missing from this? Why isn't the grade showing up? Or if you have like a pre-lab quiz uh, or something not showing up or a pre-lab assignment, which I think, I think there's maybe only one lab that has an actual manual graded pre-lab assignment question. So if like, your pre-lab grades are not showing up properly, uh, feel free to reach out to us, let us know, and we can take a look at things. But uh, for the most part, our, our experience that we've kind of kept working with this has been pretty good in terms of uh, things updating properly with uh, Kim 101, I'm sorry, with the CSE Pub uh, and D2L for our new setup. All right, so that's all I have, uh, I think, for right now. Uh, if you do have other questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to myself, your normal instructor. If you don't have me, uh, Dr. Meyer, as a normal instructor, you can actually still reach out to me. That's fine. Uh, I'm our Gen Kim Lab coordinator for all of 1211, 1212 for the most part. Uh, so I'll be happy to kind of help out, and I can often help out with CSE Pub issues too. Uh, so feel free to just reach out to us, and that's probably the theme really of the whole semester um, is like don't be afraid to ask us questions. Reach out by email as needed and just be in communication with us. Uh, especially if anything does happen to kind of come up as the semester goes along. Uh, we're all aware of kind of you know, what our circumstances and everything are. Uh, and so <clears throat> just be in communication with us and we'll do everything we can to hopefully make it through the semester together uh, as best as we can. Uh, but that's all I have for now and I will see everyone then hopefully next week.